Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of What If. Today we're going to be jumping back again to the original Dragonets of Destiny and what I think might have happened if Asha Inhibitor had survived. And dated. It's been speculated on before how different everything could have been had the Dragonets had caretakers who actually, you know, cared about them and not just their value as so-called prophecy brats. But today I wanted to take it a little further than that as you'll find by the end of this video. Asha had made it back to the cave, clutching her sister's blood-red egg to her chest, before the sun even hinted at rising. The egg was large and warm, smooth under her own rough claws. Or perhaps it was rough, and it was only the blood staining her talons that made it seem slick. Webbs found her as she collapsed in the entryway, too tired to continue. She handed off her precious cargo and closed her eyes, grimly expecting it to be the last time she ever did so. However, to the shock of the rest of the Guardian Dragons, Asha found herself waking up in the Guardian Cave mere days later, surrounded by the harsh scent of stone and the softer, cloying aroma of healing herbs. She rolled over slowly, claws already aching at the dismal dryness of the cold stone. Asha felt numb, so somebody must have taken care of the injury she'd sustained making it back to the cave. She wondered if the egg was... Was that Hibiter next to her? Forcing her blurry eyes to focus, Asha scanned the bright white shape on the other side of the small cave. It had to be Hibiter. No other ice wing should be anywhere near here, unless the healer they must have summoned was one. But he looked... wrong. There was something incorrect about... Asha realized his wings were spread awkwardly, tattered and deformed with jagged cuts in the scales and delicate membranes. His snout, too, was burnt and raw, twisted in pain even though he appeared to be mercifully unconscious. The sound of scales on stone interrupted her thoughts, and Asha caught sight of a sandwing she'd never met, probably the healer, coming in. She settled uncomfortably, eyes darting back to Hibiter's prone form. Hopefully the healer would be able to answer all her questions. Time passed, and Asha healed. She had a few more scars than she had before, but who didn't these days? She played with her nephew, Clay, her adorable little big wings and watched happily as he and the other dragonets tumbled around. They were so tiny and cute, unaware of the big bad world and their big bad destiny. Hiviter healed slower. He was in pain a lot. The burns on his snout had changed his voice, causing him to talk slowly and with great difficulty. However, despite this, he insisted on seeing the dragonets as soon as he could. He'd been devastated when they admitted the Skywing hadn't made it. Even so, when presented with glory, he nudged at her with his rigid talons and smiled softly. Asha knew he loved the little Rainwing, even if she wasn't the dragon that he'd sacrificed everything to try and save. Eventually, Hibiter was healed too, at least as much as he was going to heal. Asha knew his wings still hurt constantly, but they probably always would. And he was still the kind, if quiet, dragon she'd met before. Kestra wanted Hibiter to request a transfer back to the main Talons of Peace. She claimed, roughly, that he'd be no help raising dragonettes who would be outpacing him in mere years. Hibiter refused. Asha knew, even if she'd said it coldly, Kestra only wanted him to be happy, in her own grumpy Skywing way. Asha wanted Hibiter to be happy, too, but she was glad he chose to stay. Clay and the other prophecy dragonets had turned three by the time Asha admitted to Hibiter that she had feelings for him, that she'd had them since almost the beginning of their assignment to this mission. It was the scariest thing she ever did, and the best feeling in the world when he said yes. Growing up, Asha never thought she'd have a mate. It wasn't the Mudwing way. She'd especially never thought it would be an Icewing. But Hibiter said yes, and then they were mates. And even Kestrel smiled and congratulated them for almost a full ten minutes before going back to her usual grumpy self. The trouble started when Clay was five. All bubbly questions and fumbling movements and joyful wriggling in the mud pit Ash had finally insisted on adding to their cave. Or, more accurately, the trouble started when Kestrel learned Asha was with Egg. One Egg. Not a clutch of eggs, not a little group of dragonettes who would have a big wings like Mudwings did. But one little egg, like Ice Wings. Asha was okay with that. Kestrel, apparently, was not. 
Asha didn't see why the Skywing was so furious. It wasn't like the prophecy called for total seclusion. And it was too late anyways. She and Hibiter refused to leave, and Webbs took their side, which gave them the majority. Especially since Dune claimed he didn't care either way. Clay touched the egg reverently, and the other dragonets crowded around as well. Starflight speculated on what a mudwing-icewing hybrid might look like, and Glory changed her scales to mirror the delicate whorls of white and amber. When their dragonet hatched, they named her Vergla. She was perfect, and Asha loved her. Hibiter liked to sit with the prophecy dragonets and let them cuddle her, watchful eye on them. Vergla was a chubby, clumsy dragonet, with a penchant for nibbling on her friend's tails if she could reach them. Asha and Hibiter worked together to try and make life fun for their dragonets. Although they couldn't leave the cave, they spent time with them, telling stories about the continent they would someday save. They taught them games from both of their childhoods. Webbs even joined in on that activity, to Tsunami's endless joy. They tried to keep Kestrel from being too hard on them in training. Hibiter curled up on the sidelines, offering advice and compliments to temper her snarling comments. They brought treats from the nearby cities when they could. It was hard, sometimes, to think that her sweet little nephew Clay would someday save their entire tribe. Hers and Hibiter's, and everyone else's. But he would. His heart was big enough for it, she knew. And then they got a message telling them Marosia was coming. Asha had never met Marosir, but she knew he was the Nightwing who delivered the prophecy in the first place. His visit was so last minute, too, and they had no time to, well, to hide Vergla. Asha loved her daughter, but something told her Marosir wouldn't. His visit went, to say the least, bad. Marosir was furious about Glory, about Vergla, about how Tsunami had attacked him. He was just, in general, a very grouchy dragon. Asha hated him. Worse, though, Kestrel and the others were ready to listen to him, to his heartless demand that they... Glory wasn't a Skywing, sure, but she was still a dragonette that they'd helped raise. The argument they had that night was loud and furious. Asha left for Glaw with Sunny and Clay, forced to ignore her dragonette's worried chirps to contend with Kestrel and Dune over what they needed to do. It erupted into a full-blown shouting match. Kestrel accused Asha and Hivitor of not caring about the prophecy, of failing to do their job. Hivitor had hurled back that nobody had sacrificed more for the prophecy than the two of them. Webbs had waffled between trying to play peacemaker and taking Kestrel's side. Asha snarled that if Kestrel refused to see reason, then she and the dragonettes would leave. Hivitor immediately took her side. Tsunami, Glory, and Clay, because there'd been no way to hide this fight from the dragonettes, backed her up and Kestrel had to, furiously, filled with poisonous rage, back down, widely outnumbered. Asha and Hibiter left that night with the Dragonettes and with Vergla. They could hide somewhere, spend the last few years of the prophecy keeping the Dragonettes safe, from warring tribes, but also from Dragonettes like Marosir, who wanted to hurt them, or Kestrel, who didn't care enough to stop him. The first time the Dragonettes of Destiny saw the real world, it was because they were running away. Not by themselves, they were running away with Asha and Hibiter and Little Vergla, which hadn't been Tsunami's original plan, but it was probably better that way. She loved Hibiter, and Asha had always been sweet to her, and they'd actually been outside before and knew where the good places to hide were. Asha and Hibiter helped them find a place between the Mudwing and Skywing kingdoms to hide, where stupid Marosir wouldn't find them. Finally, instead of just learning about the world, they got to be in it and see the war for themselves. Asha and Hibiter had always been the best of their guardians anyways. Tsunami hoped the Talons of Peace fired Kestrel for being the meanest dragon ever. And that's where we'll leave off. I think the Dragonettes will probably chill with Asha and Hibiter for a while before heading off for their great world-saving destiny in this universe. I think it would be really neat for Asha and Hibiter to have survived and been mates, and it would have been comedic gold for Marlsea to show up and fight an adorable little mud-ice hybrid bouncing around. Vergla, by the way, is a thin covering of ice over a hard surface. It seemed fitting, and Hibiter is an Icelandic word meaning white, so I thought it was fitting to give his dragonet kind of an uncommon sounding name as well. Asha and Hibiter would be adorable together, I just love this idea. Hope you guys enjoyed today's what if. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos if you did. Comment and let me know what you think too, I love reading people's comments, it's my favorite part of this. 
Thanks so much for watching and please have a wonderful week.